I'm back to doing my projects again. Uh, been doing a little metal work uh, the last year or so. I bought a Harbor Freight uh, 90 amp flux core welder about three years ago. And I did a few things with it. And uh, I really like the welding. You know, uh, the welding was pretty fun. Uh, the Harbor Freight flux core, it did okay. Uh, I mean, it, it actually done pretty good for, uh, for its limitations. It was only 90 amp. But, uh, you know, it could, it could lay a bead. Uh, but I've, I've recently gone out and purchased new welder, plasma cutter, things like that. And uh, I've got a true MIG welder now. But <clears throat> uh, going kind of with the theme of, of my channel's new upgrade, I'm going to be doing videos on all my shop projects, not just, not just wood turning. So uh, I'm wanting to take you on this adventure with me. Anyway, uh, I don't claim to be a, a professional welder or anything like that. I'm not, uh, matter of fact, I'm not really good at it at all. Uh, I'm always open to constructive criticism, and I hope, uh, I hope if you got something constructive to say, you'll uh, let me know if you see me making some mistakes or whatever. But that's not the point of the project. The project is building, and uh, this project is building an offset reverse flow smoker barbecue smoker so uh, I'm gonna show you right quick uh, what I've got I've already built the stand uh, but it'll be at the beginning of the video and all that I just I didn't like the intro I did <laughs> when I went to the editor so I'm out here doing a new intro uh, where did I learn to weld uh, watching YouTube uh, a lot of good tips and stuff from weld.com on YouTube uh, if you look at uh, weld.com's YouTube channel, uh, man, they're they're great. That anything you need to know about welding and plasma cutting, uh, just anything like that, uh, even what stones to use to grind uh, metal and mill scales, stuff like that. Check them out. Uh, and uh, Chucky, Chuck E. 2009. I've been watching him for years. Uh, you know, he's got a lot of really good welding, welding videos and things like that, and, and uh, he's kind of funny too. So, uh, but anyway, I'm going to show you now what uh, what I've got going on and where we're going to go with it. Also, I want to show you. Uh, I'm going to show a few pics and uh, maybe a short video clip of. Uh, of a couple of other projects I've worked on uh, with my other little welder. All right, well, let's get started here. Okay, this, this is gonna be my smoker, or actually two smokers. It's a 330 gallon uh, propane tank, which the propane company has already safetyed for me. Uh, course I'm not going to trust that I'm going to do my own safety stuff too but apparently because of their insurance they can't sell these things until they safety them so what they did was they took all the valves out the valves and the pipes and all of that so all I've got a, are a bunch of holes up there and they took all those out they filled it up with water and after a couple of days they uh, they drained it out gave me a call and I came and picked it up uh, I got this tank uh, it was uh, $150 from a local gas company local propane company but this is it it's 330 gallons it's a 30 inch diameter uh, it's a little under 8 feet from one seam to the other just barely under 8 feet so it's, it's going to make two smokers two nearly four foot smokers uh, approximately two four four foot smokers but i've got it turned upside down right now 
because the propane is uh, actually much heavier than air and will always go to the bottom of or settle on the ground or in low lying areas or whatever so i turned it upside down so the propane any residual might can uh leak out the the uh, valve holes and things like that all right well uh, we're fixing to get started here and uh i'm gonna pick up where i left off here's a couple pictures of some of the things i've already done All right, let it down, Zach. Let it down. Say okay. Let it down. Okay. Okay. Well, this is kind of my plan here uh, for the stand. Overall, I want... Uh, I don't know if you can actually see that or not. There's my pencil. Maybe I can use it. All right, I want the height to the middle of the tank uh, to be 35 inches. Okay, now, in order to do that, uh, I had to subtract the tank, okay, from 35, and that gave me that gave me 20 okay now my wheels or my casters of course the front set which are stationary are nine inches tall and the caster or the swivel caster is nine and a half inch tall so the front and the rear are going to have to be two different lengths okay I've, I've calculated that out at 10 and a half and 11. Um, okay, and the stand will be 48 inches long. So it'll reach uh, from one end of the smoker back to the other. Hopefully from uh, one seam to the other seam. Okay, now then I get over here. Okay, it's going to be 30 inches wide. Uh, the stand's going to be 30 inches wide and I have to I have to add for the casters now what I was thinking I could have brought the casters right down off the legs right right off the legs but just for extra stability I'm gonna widen them out I'm gonna move the casters just right on the outside of the legs so I'll, I'll have to I have to make a little platform there for those for the uh, casters to actually mount to so that's the plan we're fixing to get started cutting some metal Okay, well, I've got all my all my pieces cut, uh, mainly all my pieces cut. I've still got a little bit of ciphering to do, uh, but there's there's the two for the top. They're 48 inches long. The uh, these are 10 and a half here. They'll go on the uh, swivel casters, and then the 11 inch will be on the end. With the stationary casters these are 44 inches long which is 44 uh which is four inches less than those so these are going the bottom they'll be my bottom rails top rails and bottom rails and these will be my uh my rails that will tie that will tie one side to the other cross members but anyway, as you can see, got some really rough edges. And these things are like, these things are sharp. I mean like razor blades right there. So uh, we're going to get the grinder on all these ends. Get this stuff cleaned up good for welding. And uh, 
start seeing if we can't glue this steel together make a stand all right all right let's get this mill scale off of here and, uh, I'm just gonna clean the mill scale back where I'm gonna be welding and try to get all this all these birds and stuff off of here from the from the saws all right uh, with a MIG welder you don't want any contaminants in it so you want clean metal uh, for your weld so anyway This is uh, basically going to be my stand right here. I've got everything grinded and, and cleaned so that I can make a good weld in there. And anyway, there's one side and there's the other side. So now I just need to get my welder out and see what I can do. Uh, it's a little windy, so, you know, we'll just kind of see how it goes. Alright, now I'm just going to try to get the machine set up. Uh, I've got 030 wire. So I'm looking at uh, 030, solid, solid wire, 030, uh, straight across to eighth inch, one eighth inch. So I need uh, wire speed at 200, voltage at 19. Okay, so voltage 200. Wire speed 19. Okay, that's that should uh, that should do me. And this is my uh, this is my titanium uh, MIG 140 from uh, Harbor Freight. It's been doing a good job so far. I've got my got my regulator set to about uh, it's it's on 23, but when I when I start blowing gas through it, it gets down to about 20. So, anyway, I'm going to try to get a little bit of this done as the wind dies down. So, uh, let's get her. Let's get her going. I've already got my ground clamp. Ground clamp's down. Everything's ready. Welder's on. Okay. And just let me get my safety gear on, and we'll get started.
Well, all right. It's got her all tacked up. I've, I've been over it, double checked it, make sure everything's square and the way I want it. And it is. Every one of them, every, every joint is square. So I shouldn't have much trouble with this thing. All right, now, what I'm gonna have to do now is go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and weld this frame up. But I've got some additions I'm gonna have to do to it. I'm gonna have to put some kind of pads here and down there for the, uh, for the casters. This is the bottom of the, of the rack. Okay, so uh, I've got a piece of plate. It's, uh, it's about a quarter, quarter inch thick plate that I'm thinking about using. And uh, we'll see how that goes. It's gonna be kind of, kind of hard to get that in down. You notice I've, I've just got the, uh, the tips. The tips of, of that end are still stick, are sticking up. Okay, that's where the short ones, that's where the short casters will go, is down on that end. Okay, so actually that's going to be the end toward the burn box. Okay, so uh, you can see how that, those are uh, standing proud. They're a half inch shorter than the ones up front. That's why I had to do it this way. Okay, so these are these are even, these are level. So I'll cover this end with a plate, just just a plate. And what what my plan is, what my plan is is to come with a plate that comes out, that stands out this way, and the caster will sit on it, and that'll give me another nine and a half inches here. So right now, I should be, what is it, uh, what did I say, uh, 35 minus 15, it should be a, about 20 inches with the, with the wheels. So the wheels should be there. Wheel. Okay, that'll put me dead on, right at 20 inches. So, uh, and then that'll be this right here. Of course, it's turned upside down, but the the tank will sit on this. I'm going to make supports to go here to kind of saddle the tank and that keep it from moving and everything else. So now I'm just going to get started welding all this up, and uh, and I'll I'll have to come back and grind this down after I weld it, grind it down and uh, to put my plate on here. I have to uh, put a plate down there also on each side, but I'll have to come up with a way to uh, support all of that. Anyway, all right, that's where I'm at. We're gonna get started on that right now. small gap there These are the casters that I have. 
uh, they're rated for 450 pounds and uh, you know that's uh, about 1900 pounds I think let's see uh, 16 that's 1800 pounds combined with all four of them okay so that that's way overkill for this thing but I wanted the big wheels and I wanted them solid rubber uh, that way you know don't have to worry about the tires going flat or anything like that they roll really smooth and uh, but anyway this is what I'm going to use and I need to make feet for this that I can bolt these onto and I need to make feet for it and they're actually going to be outside outside the frame if this is the frame these are going to be sitting to the outside of it Alright, got all my holes drilled, they're all 3 8 I've gone and bought my bolts, so I'm getting ready to uh, start putting this thing together. Uh, I'm going to have a problem, but I'll show you that here in just a second. Alright, here we go. This is raised up, so when I put this on, like this, you know, got a big gap under here. So, what I'm going to do about that is I'm going to cut a spacer out of this tube. I'm going to cut a spacer right there and it'll sit, and it'll sit right here. And all that will be welded together and that will give that plenty of support. I'm also going to cut gussets to come out to these things. So, all right, well, let's see how it goes. Let's get these things cut. All right, now, let's make sure that's straight. really really windy here so I may not actually get to do much welding so but we're gonna give it a shot Right. 
check for levelness. If I can pull that down with two and a half. Two and a half. All right, good. Okay, and tap this bike down. Good stone tack. Well, all right, she's uh, all welded up and ready to go. Well, I still got a couple more welds to go, but it was getting like really hot. Uh, I didn't want to dump too much heat into this thing and, uh, you know, get it all messed up. So uh, I still got a couple places like over here, uh, that gap there and this gap over here. And when I roll it over, I'm gonna do up under here too these places so anyway let me see here my, my magnetic my magnetic thing alright now anyway that'll uh, pretty much do it for part one uh, I'm re almost ready for casters uh, so I uh, I've got a little bit more welding to do up under here and uh, and it'll be ready to put the casters on and I'll be able to flip it flip it over but I want to go ahead and paint the bottom side of this uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna probably hit on that in the next video but uh, that way I don't have to try to get up under it to paint it uh, I don't want this stuff all exposed to the elements uh, uh, even the bottom of it so I'm going to paint it, and I hadn't really decided yet what I'm going to paint it, but as long as I get a coat on the very bottom surface here uh, so that it's protected, uh, it doesn't really matter, you know, nobody's ever going to see the very bottom of it anyway. So uh, I can paint it whatever color I want to and don't even have to worry about the bottom. So, uh, but anyway, uh, the stand is all but finished. Uh, the next video will be uh, putting the casters on, getting this thing lifted up and off of the table because it is heavy. And uh, I'm going to get started on the tank. And we'll see how it goes from there. Y'all uh, have a good day. And I